how you say it? Mori, muerte, death. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Is, is Mori, Mori a word for death in another language? I, I think know. it might be uh, it's, Latin. It's this art style, I think, the idea of, of the juxtaposition, life and death, right? The slightly macabre skulls and the life-giving flowers. Basically, perfect fodder for saying, let's get some nice Beth Sobel artwork. Yeah, also, has nothing to do with the theme. I mean, there's, I, I guess there's a theme in this game. Anyhow, <laughs> it's a trick-taking game. Z's going to show us how to play. All right. To set up the game, in this case for four players, we're going to shuffle up the deck of cards, we're going to divvy them out to the players, everybody gets nine in this case, and then every player also gets two of these X cards that they add to their hand. We are going to roll a handful of dice and set them on this central board with whatever was rolled. And so in this case we have the four different flowers around the outside, we got a lot of the same one here. And then the X's would go in the center. As you can tell, not everything will come up, and that's fine. You just go with whatever happened to be rolled uh, in this case. We also have a scoreboard right here, a dry erase board that's going to tell you some scoring down the side and how many rounds you are going to play. And it comes with one of these, so you can keep track of your scores. But for four players, we would play four rounds. So here's how the game is going to work. The lead player is going to play a card. Perhaps they will play this card. The next player will play a card into it. They have to follow suit if they can. Uh, if they cannot, they can play whatever they want to. And they can also always play a next card, even if you could follow suit. These are going to lose to basically everything else. And so this player would take a look. Let's assume they don't want to play an X. They could play this three right here. This player will go. And uh, let's assume that they don't want to follow. They'll play an X if they want to. And then this player, let's take a look at their hand. Okay, they have the nine. Maybe they'll play in that nine and they will take this trick. It'll be the highest card uh, of the suit led that takes it or assuming there are no trumps and if there are trumps, then the highest one of the trump suit. What is the trump suit? Well, the trump suit is whatever suit comes after the one that was led. So you can tell, as you can tell, there's these arrows here with these crowns and that is going to denote what trumps what. In this case, if this player had no purple cards, they could instead, if they chose to do it, play a red card here, and that would trump with red coming after purple, and uh, there we go, that's how that would work. So, in this case, they indeed did. They're still winning this hand. They're going to be taking these cards, putting them in their face down score pile, and then they're going to take a die from here and they will set it on this card. Everybody has one of these. I'm only showing you one. They'll take any one of these and keep it on here. This counts as a die that they have in hand, and that die is treated very much like a card in many ways. It is a card of the suit that will lose to everything else. It's basically a zero is sort of what that counts as. And so now this player will lead a card. They can play anything they want to, they could even lead with this die. Now the trick with the dice is you are allowed to break following suit if you do so with a die. Uh, normally you have to follow suit, you even have to follow suit with dice, but the dice let you bend that rule just like X's do. The X will let you play an X even if you could follow suit. A die off of the lead suit, you can put that in there even if you could normally follow suit. Those are the two things that let you bend and break that rule. This is going to continue with the player's winning hands, taking dice, playing dice. If you win a die in a trick, so if this player, for example, leads this, this player plays that, this player plays this, and then this player plays that, this is the winning player right here. They take this as well and they put it in their score pile. Not on this card, but in their score pile. Once the last die is taken from the center of the table, the hand will be over any player that is still holding any cards or still holding any dice in hand here. We'll add them to their score pile, anything you still got. And then we are going to score. So let's take a look at how the scoring works. We've got over here, it lets you know that we're gonna check how many X's we have. Again, those come from the cards that you've taken in tricks, or any dice that you've taken in tricks, or any of these two things that you ended up still holding. You'll score those. Whoever has the most of those 
is going to lose a point for each of those x's. Whoever has the second most is going to gain a point for each of those. So you want to be just below whoever has the most. And then you're also going to be scoring, as it says right here, you're going to be scoring the little leaves along the sides of these cards as positive points, and they're down the side here. So these, uh, this card here, the number three, is worth two victory points, and you're going to be losing points for any card that has the skulls. So in this case here, the seven, as you can tell, has one skull right there. Add all that up, figure out if you got any positive or negative points from the axis, any positive and negative points from the cards you took, write that down, then we shuffle up and we do it again, rolling a new set of dice and giving everybody two X cards in hand to start again. Play the required number of rounds, sum that up, and at the end, whoever has the highest score, of course, is the winner of the game. So they mentioned right at the outset that there's not a lot of theme to this game, and I agree. Um, they also mentioned Beth Sobel's art, and to me, that is something that I kind of want to lead with because I love the look of this game. Um, for some reason, uh, I know that maybe it's cliched, but the, the, the skull and roses thing, especially the way it's handled here, works really well. So I just wanted to state that off the bat that uh, the visuals in this game are very, very appealing to me on a, on a personal level. Um, so as I've been playing uh, Mori, Mori, I've heard it Mori, because I think it's Latin, and I'm well, I'm assuming we're all wrong. How about we go with that? We're All of us are mispronouncing this. There's some mystery pronunciation out there we're not aware of. Anyway, as I've played this game, I, I start to feel things. That I'm like, okay, this reminds me of this. This reminds me of this. So the, the X cards and the X dice in this game, which are basically... I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna lose this trick because there's a lot of trick avoidance in this game where you're trying to uh, not win a trick, and so you you play X cards to to you you cannot win the trick unless everyone plays X's and then the lead player gets it. Um, that reminds me of a game called Boast or Nothing, uh, a, a trick taking game that has a similar thing there where you you have these zero cards that you can play and you can't win the trick. So it reminded me of that a little bit. Um, it also reminded me a little bit of the dice being used as extra cards in hand, but they're visible to everybody. That reminded me a little bit of Nokosu dice. So, saying that, those are both games I really like. I like Boaster Nothing a lot. I like Nokosu dice a lot. And this is not derivative, okay? That's an important distinction to make. It, it gives me notes of other games that I like, but this is very much its own uh, its own game, its own design, and it's a really solid one. I like the idea of the seasons kind of determining what, what will be Trump. Um, that, that's something that is, you know, it's not a fixed Trump. It's going to be, you know, variable throughout the rounds. I like that. Um, I like the tension of how do you, you know, when are you going to be taking those X uh, dice? When are you going to be playing them? Um, it, it just is a really solid game all around. Uh, again, the look of it is very, very appealing to me. I'm giving it an 8 out of 10. Um, it's a game that I think is in the medium weight. I would not play this with people who are not familiar with trick takers, I don't think. Uh, it's not an entry level trick taking game, but it's also not the, the heaviest. I think if you have, even if you've played, you know, classic games like Hearts or Spades or Pinochle, something like that, I think that you could probably wrap your mind around this. The, the dice thing might take a little bit of getting used to, but I think that it was also the, a nice hook, and it's not a gimmick. I think that uh, it works very well in this game. So 8 out of 10, really solid. I enjoy it a lot. For me, this one is just right. It's exactly what I want it to be. Breezy plus. Breezy plus, baby. It's not too hot, not too cold. No, I like every mechanism in this one. I like the, the dice is tricks that you don't have to follow, but you can. The X is thing. You want to have... Like, there, you lose points for having a certain amount, but if you're just below that, you get points. That's such a great race, a sort of like push and pull tug of war inside of a trick taking game. The game length is wonderful, doesn't outstay its welcome, but it's long enough to make up for luck. The look is wonderful, the whole thing just sings to me. I love this trick taking game, everything about it is what I was hoping it would be. The, the, the 
the suits with the the ranking each outranking each other and trumping each other as it evolves through a hand. Knowing when to, yeah, again, it, it, it gives me enough where I feel clever playing, even if it's really just the game designer going, yeah, there, there, you're, you're, you're doing great, you're really clever. But I feel clever while I'm playing. Ooh, I'm going to play an X in here. I think I just gave you majority in those. All of that stuff comes together in a wonderful package. For me, I'm giving this one a 9. I think it is Woo! excellent. It is one of my favorite trick thing games. I love everything it does. Can't recommend it enough. All right, let's pull this back down. I'm going to flip that nine upside down. I'm giving it a six. Really? And I get it. I get why people like it. And everything you guys said about it, I understand. For me, there's just a little too much in this. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to describe it. It feels like what I'm looking for in a trick-taking game is not... I don't want to deal with dice. Dice and cards, that's kind of cool. Having the most X's, cool. I don't know that I want them both in one game. I don't know how to describe yeah. it. I don't dislike it. I play it fine or whatever. It's just that... It just doesn't do much for me beyond that. I don't really have a lot of others to say about it. I get it. I understood it. It made sense. I like the idea of avoiding tricks. That's an interesting thing. But for me, it just one left me just okay. Interesting. I'm coming in at an 8.5. I also think that this one is excellent. It is not too overwhelming, but it does have a lot going on. And yet within the first hand, the first deal of it, you start to see, oh, I, I went too heavy into this. Oh, I have too many X's. How do I pass them around more? And then you... You figure it out. It takes a little bit to, to get it, but I have so much fun with it. And Mike talked about other games that he feels that it's it's similar to, and, and, I, and I like that distinction of it's not um, derivative. But at the same time, having not played those other ones, this feels super fresh to me as well. So if you haven't played a lot of other ones, I don't think you need to feel like you have to have a deep backlog of trick-taking games sure. to come and enjoy this one. This is not necessarily a first one, Right. I think that there is a little bit too much going on, but Breezy Plus is kind of, we're jokingly saying that that's where it fits. <laughs> yeah. And I agree. It's fantastic for me. So 8.5. Yeah. There you go. That's Amori.